Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're all doing well this morning. As you can see, the subject today is a cow, which has been one of my favorite subjects for a while now. But I want to approach this year with some goals in mind. And one is to try to loosen up a little bit so I can get very, uh, almost like to go for photorealistic and I just want to be a little more loose. Good morning, Anne. And, um, I, yeah, I, the last time I mentioned trying to come up with a word for the year, and there's two words that come up for me, and one is confidence. Um, I, I just think we all could use more confidence. Thank you, Anne. Uh, you know, in all kinds of ways with uh, whatever's going on in our life, whether we're artists or, um, you know, in some other kind of field, and then also confidence in our the rest of our life um, and building new habits is always something we focus on in the new year. And um, I have to share with you one of my bad habits that I want to work on breaking this year. And that is that I don't put caps on things on the paint. It's a terrible habit because what will happen is then it starts to build up around here and the caps don't fit and also you start to get paint like other colors here onto the outside of your tubes it's just not a good thing so um, my penance today is i'm gonna take each tube and find the cap and then clean the uh, you know the part you screw back on and then the outside of the tube hopefully that will uh, really help to reinforce having the new habit. So feel free to ask me how I'm doing with that as time goes on. Uh, so, you know, if you've watched me before, uh, sometimes I would paint acrylic red all over. But since I'm doing the transparent colors to begin with, that will really serve to be the... Um, the base color and then the opaque colors I put over, um, you know, will allow color to show through, which is kind of what I was going for with the red um, toning of the canvas. And just to see how it would change the feel, I went ahead and did extra gesso on this. Um, see if I could tell a difference. You know, they come pre gessoed, but. Just want to see what it feels like. And I didn't do a drawing because we're just going to jump in there and be more loose. And uh, to start out with, I'm going to do, I'm going to use purple, some dioxazine purple, with some liquid in it to kind of make it flow well. And just kind of start putting some of this color in there. It's pretty bright. And I think I need even more liquid to get that flowing better. Gosh, and I have the camera right here in front of my face, so it's always a challenge to and it kind of comes over into this part here. Ah. Oh, that's not fun. Well, we're toning the canvas with a little something different underneath. So, 
looks like I need to hold this the whole time too. Yeah, got a little burnt sienna in there in the mix. <laughs> Which can't hurt at all. At this stage, we're just playing in color. Oh, the other part of being more loose, being a little more intentional with my brush strokes. So we don't have to keep doing it. Okay, and we get this dark of his nose in there. Oh, I wanted to mention that I'm not going to do the tongue up the nose. It's kind of disturbing to me. <laughs> I mean, it is humorous, I guess, but... So we're starting to see him come forward just by doing that much, right? And I'm gonna do some, some uh, ultramarine blue as well. In places. I see some blue in this area here. Boy, when you want to start a new habit, you really have to think about it a lot, like just to be intentional with the brush strokes. But I don't think that's a one and done type thing. I think you have to keep, maybe I should put a sign above my easel, be more intentional as well as Put the caps back on the paint. Because that's what happens with habits. You just kind of go into overdrive. Oh, okay. Thank you for telling me that. Better? Okay. Um been posting to YouTube I need to um, but they are on my uh, feed the the past ones are still on there if you have trouble watching them let me know the other thing I want to do is upload it to my blog I have to see how I can do that I have a blog on my website that I've ignored for a while so that's a new thing I need to get back to. Okay, so more of this here. Oh, not holding it again. Okay, so what color for the white? We might still want to put some color in that white area that we'll mix in. We'll put some right in here. See, I tend to get scrubby rather than brush strokes. All right, and then over on this area, I think I'll still do just a light coating of some of the burnt sienna. And some of it just in the rest here. Now the background, I did start to put some burnt sienna. Uh, so I'm going to do some sap green. And then as it goes up, I'll do a little bit of viridian because I want it to cool it off there.
Some people use a combination of um, linseed oil and terpenoid or terps for this first layer, but I really like the liquid, so that's what I'm sticking with right now. One reason I like the liquid is that it dries more quickly. And this piece right here, I'm, do, I'm in a, a local school show coming up, Nansman Suffolk Academy. And uh, you, you submit five into the show, but then if you tend to sell uh, in the show, they allow you to leave a few more because it's kind of a drive out there. And so this one's going to be a backup and I deliver on Friday. So I want it to be dry to the touch. Unless somebody would love it that sees it, you know, between now and Friday. Uh, probably have it on my website and then it'll be available. Hi, Valerie. Okay. Um, so in this area here, I see I'm going to do it straighter because like I said, I'm going to not put the tongue part coming out there. I'm going to put a little bit of um, red in this area here. And then up here by his nostril. And then I'll look to see, is there anywhere else that might be fun to have some red? For some reason I thought there would be good. Kind of got carried away with his ear. And then down in here I see kind of a hint of red. Okay. Now I did leave some white areas shown. I gotta hold on to that or we're gonna have another debacle here. Okay. All right. Now, um, this size uh, sells for 250 In the show, it'll be framed, and it could be available with a frame also. And it, it goes for 300 with the frame. And it's a, like a gold plein air frame, which I have pictures of if you're interested in that. Okay. So now we'll start with the opaque colors. And uh, for the greens... Well, we'll start. I'll start with the face. Go right into the face. So I like to mix a dark with the ultramarine and some burnt sienna. I'm gonna throw some some of that dioxine purple in there too. And we'll do that dark side. Actually, this, when I said that, it's just go in with opaque colors. This is actually all transparent, but it makes a nice dark that looks more solid. Let me put more on. Okay, so here where the light's hitting it, I'm going to mix in a little bit of uh, a gray. Um, it's, uh, it's called ice blue. Now I need to warm that up just a wee bit. Okay, a 
we use a different gray that's a little cooler. It's better. Okay, I'm gonna come around the side of the face where the light is hitting it. I did, really didn't bring that ear in there right, so I'll fix that. I really continue to draw as I paint and refine the drawing because I did, did that kind of quickly. And I'm going to take some of the dark transparent combination here and kind of go in here where that ear was. Okay, go back to being intentional with my brush strokes. Next week, I'll, I'll have a reminder of next to it, the photograph of whatever I'm painting. Be intentional. Okay, anywhere else we need to put that dark? The nose, yes. And he has some dark on the one side of his mouth. Okay. All right, for the white, I like to use uh, Soft Mixing White by Winton. I don't like the consistency of titanium white. I found that this soft mixing white uh, goes on more easily and it has just a little bit of yellow to it. Not much, but just a little. Which um, takes a chalkiness out of the white, I think. Boy. Purple is a very staining color. Try to get out of your brush. I use a, a lot of the... I stick with one brush. and So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get some of that out. Okay. So try to be intentional. Just put some of that color down. And we'll be adding quite as much of the liquid now as I put this opaque color in. And it will take some layers to get it the way I want it. Okay. So that's kind of cool. That's picking up some of the uh, what color was that? Oh, that red. Yeah, the red that I put down. I like that. You might notice that I have a tendency to hop around on the canvas. It's the same way I paint a room. But I get the whole room painted eventually. Okay. Kind of Let the edge of the brush carve things out, or the corner, rather. OK. 
Okay, now this side is really kind of in shadow, so we're going to use some of that purple and a little bit of uh, yellow ochre, which I did not put out, so let me grab that. Oh, sorry. My shoulder caught that. Okay, I'm adding some yellow ochre to the uh, dioxine purple because it's a complement of it and it will gray it out a little bit, which is what we want in that shadowed area, which does kind of look warm to me. I think it's reflecting maybe some of that grass underneath him or her, probably her. Okay. And where else can I put that now? I'm gonna put it a little bit in here. And some up in here. And maybe some right in here. Okay, now I'm gonna put some, start to put some of peg color in that background. Oh, I see where I needed some color right here. this ear so big that I missed that white part there. Put that up here. All right, so for the background, I'm gonna add some cool yellow, some lemon yellow into some ultramarine blue. As I put it up to there. Okay, it needs to be a little toned down, so I'm going to add just a touch of red, because that's the complement of green. And it just takes some of that uh, saturation out. Yeah, that's better. seems a little bit dark, doesn't it? I'm going to add just a touch of white to it, see how that looks. Another touch. Okay, and as it comes down further, I'll add a little bit of warmer yellow, some cad yellow medium. And then it lightens up just a little bit there in the front. Maybe a little more yellow. And the warmer colors, you do 
more close up because the warm colors come forward and cool colors recede. And even though you might think of green as being a warm color, um, there's cool greens and warm greens. And so I tried to use warm, I made a green with ultramarine and yellow and I tried to warm it up as it came a little bit closer. So. some the darker area here back there which is a, some tree a tree line so kind of put some of that in don't have to make it exactly this and that's what I'm trying to think about with loosening up so we'll kind of get rid of some of that there Some more of that dark. I do like the dark here because it gives a sense of depth. Now that I look at this, I'm, I'm not real pleased with this, what I did here. I'm trying to do something different. I don't think it worked. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of white in here so I can see the side of his face better. up some of that white I'm going to use a little bit of the beige that I have which is a, I'm going to mix it with the soft mixing white this is the beige it's a, a Lucas brand and it's, it's more yellow white which will make it look a little more sunlit. Okay. Now, before I go any further, I want to get those eyes in because it's just, it's not talking to me yet <laughs> without any eyes. his expression here. So to make my dark for the eyes, I use some of the dark dioxine, ultramarine, and burnt sienna all mixed together with more of the blue and the purple because that's their darker values. Okay. So we're going to go in here. I 
This side is very hard to see, so we're just gonna have to wing it. I know it's there. My iPad is a uh, morning pad, thank you. Um, 12 inch by 12 inch, and so it, I can't sit it next to this. The iPad would be good because then I could do this. I almost want to do that with like regular photos. <laughs> I'm so used to doing that on the iPad, just to, would like to see that bigger. Okay, um, we'll focus on this one here anyway. And we're gonna get a little bit of warmth in there because it would be warmer in here. And basically what we see around it is what's gonna shape the eye and that's the light And his lower lid, her. I'm sure this is a dairy cow. I don't know why I keep calling it him. I'm going to take a little bit of St. Remy Blue, put that in here, and maybe just a tiny highlight here. Cows always have the most amazing eyelashes, it's just so unfair. And then this area around the eye. This is where I get into the details. <laughs> but I do like, like doing a portrait of the cow, you know? Okay, so just we'll suggest it in a less definite way over here. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of a suggestion there. You actually can't see this cow's eyelashes like I like, but I'll put put them in like that. And then this side's going to be grayed down more. So Okay. I'm not sure how you guys are seeing this. I can't see it as well as I'd like to, but it's the way we have to do it. Okay, so now the, na the um, nostrils. And this nostril, if his tongue wasn't in it, would be right about there. Oh, just because I just thought of it. Even though you can't really see a whole lot of red inside that ear, I'm gonna add some in of the transparent red first. Okay. Um, 
And I'm going to do some of that light bit on his nose so he can start to sense this, the bridge of his nose here. some of my Maserat orange. It's, it's just like the perfect color, I think. And that whole side of the nose I, needs to go white. So let's get some of that in there. Actually making it lavender, but the next coat of it will make it white. And then this side would be the same, but we got the tongue in the way now. Oh, I mentioned in the beginning that I'm going to do this cow without the tongue in the nose. Let's see if we can get enough white on here that we get the different shake on. You got kind of a funny hairdo. That would be what you call a bowl cut right now. Bring it out. There we go. Give him a little bit of personality, some looseness. No, I think he's starting to come to life a little bit. I start to get that all kind of a thing going, then I really start to have fun. So now I'm seeing this black up here that I did not make. When I mix that ultramarine and the dioxine and burnt sienna, that's I'm kind of making it black. There we go again. It's different when I don't tone the canvas first. <laughs> All those little white places really drive me a little crazy. I did tone it with all the transparents, but a lot of times I do a red, cad red light on the back of my paintings too. Okay, so I'm gonna try doing just some gray see what gray this is. I think I have it on the bottom of my pile to be fixed here. 
Well, it's a Lucas, and I think it's a cold gray. Let's see if I like, oh yeah, okay, that might be better. Maybe mix just a little bit of white in there. There is a point in your painting, and since I'm doing it so fast, where you're kind of like, ee, geez, I don't know. Um, and it's a constant thing to try to have faith. Okay, just keep going. Just don't think about it yet. Just keep going. They call it, they, a lot of people call it the messy middle stage. where it's sort of established, but it's sort of not looking really great yet. Okay, I think I'm gonna use some of that Maserat orange and add some in here. Oh yeah, I like that. And there's some right up at the top here. Now some people wonder, well, can't I just use black? You can use black. You can use whatever colors you want, but I just have always mixed my darks using like ultramarine blue and um, Either alizarin, it makes like a dark purpley color, or today I'm mixing the dioxine purple and ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Um, it just all goes together to make a really dark color, but you could use, imagine like ivory black. Or um, I just think it's nice to add other color maybe to it, just, just to give it more color, so I like color. Um, you could even use, make like a transparent oxide brown, maybe add uh, ultramarine blue into that. If you wanted to make it like a brown, a dark brown black cow. There's all kinds of possibilities. And for this green up here, you know, I had put, I think I'd put a, uh, I'm not sure if I used the Viridian or not now, but had I used Viridian up here, um, which is kind of a dark, cool green, um, you could just add some ultramarine in with that, and if you want to green it up, just add some yellow. Okay, so now I'm going to work on some of the darkening some of the values in places again. Where I see it. And like in here, it used to go darker. The values are so important, the dark relative uh, light to dark areas. Getting them correct is the most important thing, more than what colors you use. And you can see as you do that, it starts to develop depth and come to life a little. And let's see, this is pretty good and dark. Put some of that out there. It's kind of a bridge for the ear to attach there. And go darker in the place here that's in shadow. I don't put the tags in, so sometimes when I'm doing certain shadows, I have to be careful because it's the shadow's not there from the tag. I just feel like bad enough they have to have tags in their ears. I don't need to paint it in. Some people might like the tags, so. though.
Okay, I'll go back and tighten up this shape here. And underneath this area here. All right, so what do we do next? Good morning, Mary Elsa. Thanks, Pat. All right, I see where I need to work the lighter values now. So I'm going to take some the soft mixing white. Just got a new tube of it, and it's like there's a lot of oil at the beginning part. That's what, that got all kind of soupy looking. Hmm. Try to overcome that by using it more of the flat of the brush and laying the paint down as thick as I can. Sometimes you'll have that with a tube of paint. It's a new one and you open it up and squeeze the color out and it's like all this oil in the beginning. Okay, let's see if we can get that white to go on better that's on either side of his snout. Yeah, that's better. This is how you put down color without mixing it. It's a light touch, quite a bit of paint on the brush, and sometimes using the side of the brush too, but it doesn't always work for when you want to get areas like that. Oh, I think he's starting to get, she's starting to get cute. It's not like I've had a male cow or anything. That's why I'm getting confused. I haven't painted a cow in a while, and that's like one of the main things I've painted before. It's kind of fun to get back to it. I needed a break for a while, and now we're back. Okay, I think I'll put some of that Montserrat orange into the ear, just because I can. Oops, overshot my target. I think I can put a little bit of that orange into the corner of his eye too. Her eye, geez. a little more of it here. And a little right here.
bring this it kind of comes to a corner there all right what next oh, I think it brings some for some reason it goes in here and maybe just a little bit of a sense of an edge there. I still have that over too far. Oh well, I just because I like cows with big ears. Add some more white to the top. This is a point in the painting where I just kind of go rogue and just start seeing things everywhere. Keep that darker there. So I'll press more, to press harder here. No, oh, I didn't look at the clock. That's the way you know you're having fun because I hadn't looked at the clock the whole time and I see getting towards the end where I need to start making some decisions about what to do to really put the finishing touches on. So I see a dark bit in here. I want to make sure it's in there. Because it's opposite, there's dark here and dark here, and then light here and light there. So now I'm going to use mostly the beige because that's the warmer white, and that will give more of a sense of light. I'll try doing it on the flat part. Mm -hmm. Even that mixed in a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of soft mixing white because it still looks too yellow to me. And then on this side here, it's interesting light pattern. It's a little lighter. And then on this side. Oh, I said in the beginning that I had gessoed this canvas a couple of times to see how it would be different. And what I would say is that it is slippery, more slippery feeling to me. So I'd have to get used to it. When things are more slippery, you can't control as much. Maybe, and that's what I wanted to do, be more loose, right? But here I am wanting to control it. Okay, hopefully you can see where I just kind of 
kind of add it more, more light, sense of light anyway. And where I'll do more work here is the dark, you know, playing with the dark and the light on that. I missed it here where you still see purple showing through. So what I'll have to ask myself as things start to set up on this painting is how much further do I really need to go? Or do I leave it be more? These are the questions. Oh, I see where I need to put a little bit of white as his back goes back in space. Lisa, you can rewatch. Um, it'll be on my feed, and you just you click on it um, later when you have time. And I really need to get better about putting it up on uh, YouTube, and then figure out how to put it on my blog. So it, it's a big file, so you have to download it into iPhotos, why I figure, and then upload it onto those other places and I just need to do it. There's nobody else here that's going to do it for me. I wish there were people here that would be like, oh, I can take care of that for you. No problem. I'm a real techie. My new studio assistant, Coco, who is, is in my story. She's not even in the studio with me today. She's resting. <laughs> so she won't do it. Okay, I think I'm going to sign it and then just let it set up and then have a conversation with myself about what do I really need to change? You know, I think I need to bring that up further. You can let me know in the comments maybe how much more I should do on this. Like, do I keep working it or... I know he's probably going to want to say that to me, but maybe. Um, oh, yeah. I knew there was something I was going to want to do here before I sign it. Okay. Let me use my... Oh, you're welcome, Lisa. Um... That makes me happy. This is my write out tool, which you can see since I don't put the tops back on my tubes or I haven't historically been doing that. It gets paint all over it, but I really like this. And I use this end of it. Um, when I paint my canvases red, it looks really cool. This, we'll see how it turns out. Yeah, it just, it just looks white, but oh well. can tell I just had morning coffee. There, I'll even be loose with my signature. Okay. Get 
Get the red photo? You mean the, the reference? Oh, the reference. Yeah, the reference photo. Um, you know what? Maybe that could be part of my project today. I'll see about putting it on my blog and um, see if I can upload the video on there too. But that's what I would do is check out my blog for the reference photo. Unless you could, you know, what you could do too is um, take a screenshot, like right here, you know, like in the beginning, you'll be able to take a screenshot and you'll have the reference photo right there. If you, if you don't want to wait till I figure out how to do all the other stuff. Okay. This has been fun. Thank you so much, everybody. And I hope you'll join me. You know what? Next week, I can't. I have an appointment. So I won't be doing the demo next Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, I'll be back. Same bat channel. If you're old, you know what that means. Okay. All right. You'll have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been great. And um, bye now.